We are Brooke and Gary. One Life has been our home for the past two years and over 6,000 nautical miles. We have been in Costa Rica for the past two weeks. Our first stop here was a charming coastal town of Golfito, where the anchorage was calm, the people were friendly, and the bull riding was a wild time. Next, we sailed to Bahia Drake, where the nature and wildlife have been absolutely incredible. So the question is, will these Pura Vida vibes continue? seen a crocodile since we've been here so we're gonna head over to Rio Serpe and see what we can find. Less than five miles from where we were anchored in Bahia Drake is the entrance to the Serpe River which is the gateway to the largest mangrove sanctuary in Latin America. So we made it all the way up the river to the town of Serpe and it's a cool little like I don't know eco town. Yeah, so there's a restaurant, a little hotel, and lots of tour boats. Sierpe is a small town with a population of only around 4,000 people, but the surrounding wetlands and wildlife attract visitors from all over the world. We walked around for a bit, but it was time for us to get back to the dinghy to continue looking for crocodiles. We didn't get too far before this caught our attention. To get stuff across the river here, they have a barge. And right now there's a giant truck full of lumber that's loaded on the barge. And they just have a single boat with like a 115 horsepower engine trying to maneuver this barge across this river with like two or three knots of current. It's the wildest way to get stuff across a river, a river I've ever seen. So is he gonna go back that way? <laughs> The ingenuity and resourcefulness of the people we meet along our travels always amazes us. With such limited infrastructure, these types of solutions allow people to develop and live in such remote places so far up a jungle river. Very, very clever. All right, time to get back to our crocodile search. You wouldn't swim in here. No, I'm not gonna swim in here. I like stuck in the mud, I wouldn't get out and think anything. I would just Oh say, yeah, here's something. Yeah, I'm not gonna get the water not a chance. It just looks so intimidating in here. The water is like this murky brown. <laughs> and we're just waiting for a crocodile to pop up like next to our dinghy at any minute. Oh, 
What? <laughs> well, shit, how's our prop? Probably that's just mud. Holy fuck. Oh, thank god. So we just need to row out of here? Trim up. So because we were going so fast, we ran way into the shallow part, right? And could have got really stuck. And we would have had to get out. <laughs> you just said you weren't getting out in this. Yeah, I would have waited for high tide. <laughs> At 12 midnight. We are still getting used to the 10 foot tidal change in this area and it never occurred to us that some parts of the river would be almost impassable at dead low tide. But we kept going, searching for crocs. And as it turns out, despite Gary saying he would not get in this water, there is one thing he will get in the water for. We just lost the drone. It? Yeah, it's, a, it's a controller. What's it say? Image transmission lost. Return home now. So we were flying in the river, getting some awesome shots, and the drone just like took off on its own and went here in these mangroves and came crashing down. So Gary's literally trying to find it now we at least want to we know the drone won't work anymore but we at least want to try to get the footage off of it how far in do you think it went i was I, down at the controller. so i think i don't think it went that far in at all it just looked like it hit that and then just came like tumbling down Oh, holy shit, you found it. It's still on. It's going to take the back off. I got it. Oh my god. <laughs> this is how a great day turns into a shitty day. But... At least we have the drone, so we have the footage that's been on there, hopefully. It's just from today, so it's not that big of a deal. But, yeah, it's fresh water at least. No, it's not. Brackish. So we just ran the dinghy across again. I think we're going to need to just go back. <laughs> Do you want me to get the paddles? Yeah, let's try to push ourselves off of this. Going 20 miles an hour and we ran right up onto a shallow spot. <laughs> Literally, this is how shallow it is. Alright, let's try to go forward first. That's as deep as my paddle will go. the pack on just in case we do tip overboard we have our stuff all in the water proof bag and Gary's putting the lanyard on and here we go where the Rio Sirpe meets the Pacific Ocean large swells break across the shallow river mouth. 
running across this bar requires good timing and extra caution. All right, we made it through the challenging part, so I think we're free to run. Ready? Listo. It's not looking good. There's a lot of corrosion all over the boards inside of the drone, but I have it all taken apart. I'm going to clean all the parts as best I can with alcohol, put it all back together, let it dry, and I'm sure it won't work, but I'm going to try anyway. GPS module. This is the main board. This is the speed controller for the motors. Do you want to wait for a little while and see if it dries out, or do you just want to give it a go? I mean, it's either going to work or it's not, don't you think? Yeah, I don't think there's any water left in it anywhere, unless it's like inside of some part like this that I haven't taken apart. But... Did it power on? Camera does work. Yeah. The camera is working. I see me in it. Camera's working. So it's flying along fine, doing its thing, recording nice footage. I don't understand what goes wrong here. So it's just like flying. I started going up a little bit because I want to get like a top down shot. It just goes way out of whack. Whoa! Down it goes. Oh boy. What's next? Uh, take it to lane and try to calibrate the IMU because it's still giving me an error like every two seconds. All right, we're here in town and it's the moment of truth with the drone. Here we go. So that's not really turning and balancing. Everything else here is to be okay except for the gimbal. It flies, but the gimbal's breasted. It, uh, it's not holding the camera steady, so it's not really usable to get footage, but who knows, maybe we can replace that or fix it. I'll have to do some more work on it. Good morning. We are underway already this morning. It is about 7.30 and we just pulled anchor and we are headed to Bahia Uvita. It's only about 25 miles north of us. So we are gonna anchor there tonight and continue on our journey tomorrow to Cuecos but there's zero wind and actually our wind sensor isn't working for some reason this morning. So Gary is trying to figure out what's going on with that. During most of our passages, we tried to focus filming the sailing, but this is what it looks like when we motor the whole time. Ah yes, it's the perfect time to clean the boat using power. So we take full advantage by using the vacuum and the Instant Pot. And there's Gary, working hard at motoring. After a few hours, we approached the entrance to the anchorage. It looked a bit sporty, with waves crashing over the breakwater, but we decided to go in and drop the anchor anyway.
it was much calmer motoring in the open ocean than it was inside this anchorage. So we're anchored here. We made it to Bahia Uvita. It was a motor the whole way. We didn't catch any fish, but this anchorage is pretty exposed and not very comfortable. <laughs> and we knew that coming here, but the issue was is that the run from Bahia Drake to Manuel Antonio and Cuepos area, the next anchorage, is about 60 miles, which means that we're pretty sure that we wouldn't make it there by sundown, and we really don't like to go into anchorages at night, especially when we know they're a little bit busier. Uh, so we decided to go ahead and check it out here and stop and just drop the hook and stay overnight. How's the anchorage? I'm posting to Instagram right now that Uvita is making a play at the worst anchorage ever award. Why is that? Because it's pretty terrible in here. So why we are rolling around here at anchor, <laughs> Gary decided to dive into our wind sensor a little bit more. I don't know how we did it because being down there makes me a little seasick right now. <laughs> <It's hard>. But <laughs> let's hear what he has to say. Okay, I think it's really fun down here. Ready? What's wrong with the wind gauge? Uh, I don't know. I think we're having some sort of networking error. So our wind gauge is Garmin and it goes down to this box, which then converts it to NEMA 2000 to send to our chart plotter and our displays. And sometimes this box doesn't get the signal from the wind transducer. So either the transducer is failing intermittently or there's just some sort of software bug going on because I basically just reset everything and it works again. Whee! Kind of feels like we're sailing. Yeah, so Uvita is definitely making a run at the worst anchorage ever. <laughs> nah. Contenders are Saba, Montuosa. Gary still says Saba wins. Saba wins for sure. Let's see. Let's see if we have footage from all three. So we have Saba, we have Isla Montuosa, and we have Uvita. And I think we have footage from all three. We'll roll real quick and let the people decide. <laughs> the footage always, like, it never does the, it justice at all. But anyway, we're here and we're safe. And that's what matters. When we open these drawers and really roll anchorages, you got to be really quick and time it for the right roll. Because otherwise, watch. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's hilarious. This one's got to go in here. Okay. And then top. <laughs> We've kind of just been like relaxing all afternoon, but it's low tide now and we can see the beach over here. And there's a whole bunch of people over there walking around. So we're going to see if we can land the dinghy on it. We figure that while we're here, we might as well try to make the most of it. And it is actually really, really pretty here. It's a shame that this anchorage is so swelly and exposed or else it would be a beautiful place to spend a couple days. It's one life out there. It's going to take a little while to get used to the dinghy surf landings here in Costa Rica. We ended up taking on a bit of water during this one. I keep thinking about that big sky I've seen so many times before But it's something else today Right, 
also these rocks up ahead of us here as the breakwater for the anchorage. And the problem is at low tide, it does a pretty good job, but at high tide, the waves, when the swell's big, just crash over the rocks and make the anchorage pretty uncomfortable. But it's really cool to see at low tide, and it looks like it's a popular spot because there's a ton of people here walking. And I've never really seen um, a place where there's like a sand spit and the waves come up and meet in the middle over the sand spit. So that's pretty cool. When we entered the anchorage, all of these rocks were like completely just underwater. While we were walking the beach, we noticed a four wheeler pull up to our dinghy and start taking pictures. So we decided to make our way back. I started to film the interaction, but then realized we were having a serious problem and it was time to put the camera away. They act like the water is part of the national park, which is absurd. It's not like we're entered on green. Yeah. All right, we need to get back to the boat. We'll fill you in on what happened in a second. But first, we need to make our way out of the surf. Shit. Good one. Yes. You'd be warning, you'd be washed away by the wave. Can you get in, babe? No, I can't get in yet. It's another one. Shit! Ah, cruising in Costa Rica. It's Para Vida here. Or is it? All right, so we just got back to the boat and when we were walking the beach, someone was looking at our dinghy and it was a park ranger. And basically he told us that we are not allowed to anchor here or come to shore because it's a national park, which we did not know that. And it's marked as an anchorage on our charts and in our Costa Rica cruising guidebook. Um, but yeah, he told us we have to leave now or else they will come and call the Coast Guard and confiscate our boat. So we're going to quick rinse off and get a move on. Yeah, it's just a little strange here because we were just anchored outside of Corcovado National Park, which is totally okay, but this national park apparently you can't anchor outside of. And then we're heading down to Cuepos and we're going to anchor outside of Manuel Antonio National Park, which apparently is okay. So it's just really hard to figure out what the actual rules are. And we want to follow the rules, but if we can't find the rules anyway, anywhere, it's really hard to follow. them. Yeah, so we couldn't find anything online about this place um, and about the park restrictions. So anyway, we better get a move on. Ready? Ready. All right, ciao for now. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for watching.